Um, Teresa will tell me off otherwise. She says you must, must record all these things. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do the, I'm going to make the recut, the recut of dumplings with Natalie sauce first, and then we're going to go back and we're going to show you how to make the ricotta. And the other thing I'm going to do, and I know none of you are vegan, but I know Karen is, is looking at more um, vegetarian style things. Uh, but just, just because sometimes we've had vegans coming into the house, we're going to make a vegan parmesan as well, which is super simple, um, but we, we're going to do that. So we'll start off. Um, I'm just going to pin my um, screen. There we go. Okay. Um, and just a little tip, actually, uh, for those of you who are on the Facebook page, I actually posted this morning, um, Cookie Doom was down from 7 till 10. I found out last night, should have posted last night, sorry for inconvenience anybody. But if cooking do is going to be down, because I'm thinking, oh, I hope it's back up by the time we start this. Because what I normally do is I, I actually save um, the recipes into my week. But if you can't do that, what you do is just make a collection. Because when you make a collection, the recipes are downloaded straight away. So I, I did make a collection, but it's all back and it's fine. All right, ricotta dumplings. Can you see my screen? Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll put that blind down. Sun wasn't out before, but now it's come out. I'll just let, wait for this line to go down. Oh, we're going to skip through this because this is the making of the ricotta, and we'll do that in a minute. Okay. All right. So, first thing. We've got 100 grams of bread, and I actually am using frozen bread. So I, I think the idea is it says stale or frozen, just so that it's hard. Going in. Oh, look at that, spot on. 100 grams of Parmesan cheese. So there's my cheese. It's always good to chop it into bits like that, sort of size. All right. So half a lemon, zest only. So I'll just show you what I've got in here. I've got the half a lemon. See that? Um, the zest only. I've got my basil. I've got, I didn't have oregano. I'm sorry, I'm not going out to buy a whole bunch of oregano. So that is some dried oregano. Um, some salt. So I'm going to put all that in. So just, I don't know if any of you have um, made lemon zest or anything like that. Um, uh, this, yeah, it sort of grated your lemons to make zest. It actually grates a lot better, I find. Um, if, if it's something that does require some sugar in it, then if you put it in with the sugar, I find it grates better. And that's obviously what they, what's happening here too. So I'm going to put the lid on. <laughs> 10 seconds. I don't know who's uh, unmuted, but if someone, whoever's not unmuted, could you please mute? So we're going 10 seconds up to speed nine. I'll just show you what that looks like and it's all cute, just like a crumb, really, yeah. And then this is the ricotta. So I made this yesterday. And just pop that in. We'll talk a little bit more about the ricotta when we're actually making it. Lid on again. Set the time for 15 seconds. I just have to turn up to speed three. Mm -hmm. 
well. There's a few bits there that haven't mixed in properly, so I'm just going to give it a few more seconds. You can see that as bits they sort of gravity's put them to the bottom of the bowl. Right? Let's break them up a little bit then. So this when I made them yesterday, um, the ricotta wasn't as firm because it was it was very fresh. So if you want to do something again, you just literally do the back button and then just turn up again. Still a couple of months, but that's you can see that's not bad. So um, <clears throat> what uh, what we're going to do now is I um, I'll just change well, I'll just pull this out a little bit so you can see a bit more. Um, I found yesterday when I made them it was actually easier to tip out of to tip out of here into another bowl. So. Very helpful having a kitchen that's being renovated with no cupboards on the doors. No doors on the cupboards, I mean. Just put everything in. So just tip that out. And I'm not going to make all of them because I actually only cooked uh, a couple yesterday. So I've got plenty, I just, you know, mindful of time and how long it takes to to make a few of these things. So, so that's what it looks like. And then and I'm just going to get the Varoma. And I have done, as it said, and greased the tray. But those are the ones that I made yesterday. And they've actually just been sitting in my fridge. But what, what it suggests that you do is that you use wet hands with this. So I'm just going to wet my hands. And then come back and I just literally squeeze them together because I was a bit concerned that it wasn't all going to come together, but it certainly managed to yesterday. So we're going to put these at one end. So remember which are the fresh ones and which are the ones I did yesterday so that we can see if there's any difference. So I'll just do probably three or four. Oh, just looking at them, they're a slightly different colour. And, and the reason for that is that I used, um, we had some, I don't know why we had white bread. I think it was to do with um, bread sauce or something at Christmas time in the freezer, you know, that horrible plastic white bread. And um, I used that yesterday and I've used a multi-grain today. So we should be able to tell the difference anyway. All right. Here we go. All right, so I'll pop those on there. I'll move that out of the way. I'm gonna finish those later. Put my hands another rinse. Right, so it says using using wet hands, squeeze the ricotta mixture into walnut-sized balls to form dumplings and put them onto the grease varoma tray. Then we set the varoma aside. One brown onion, cut in half. So it's quite a decent sized onion. Two garlic cloves, whoops, there we go. Lid on. And again, so we've got three seconds, just turning up to speed seven. You all know what that looks like. Just got to remember to keep your face away. Um, 30 grams of olive oil. Whoops, 35 grams of olive oil. Okay. 
All right, so I'm just going to cook for three minutes 30. Now I'm just going to check the chat box because there's a few there. Okay. All right, so, yep, yeah, so thanks, Julie. So, yeah, it is 250 grams. Well, it's roughly that. So it's whatever whatever comes out, whatever your, um, uh, whatever it makes. So apparently the longer that you leave it, the less moisture it's going to have into it. Now, I, um, I don't know, I'm not very scientific, so I don't know if that's going to make a difference to the weight. But, um, but the, the, the longer you leave it to drain, the firmer it's going to be. And if you don't leave it to drain as long, obviously it's going to be a softer ricotta. And Teresa, yes, I will. There are definitely a couple of um, collections in Cookie Do, uh, which are natural sugar, and I will post those ones for you. Okay, any other questions at the moment? Feel free to take yourself off mute if you've got anything, any, any burning questions? No? Okay, all right. And where is this recipe? This recipe, um, it is, um, it's, hang on, I'll tell you what, uh, let me just have a quick look. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know if you just, if you just sign, um, I just had a look in cookie do, but I can't quite. Yeah, okay, uh, so it possibly could be in the UK. Oh, right, okay. Um, let's just have a look. Well, don't worry, you can let us know later. It's asking me to re-register, so I'm, I'll, I will find it for you though. I'll tell you what we'll do. We've got a minute. Um, I've got, I'm going to share my screen and we'll go on the cookie do. Mandy, can I just ask you? Yeah. What, what bread works the best for this? Um, well, I honestly can't answer that question, but I did use white yesterday. And I've used, um, it's a soy and linseed one that my um, my husband likes um, today. Okay, so you could use sourdough even? Well, uh, I, I mean, well we might see if Teresa's got any comments on that because she's, um, she's Italian, she might know more about it. <laughs> but um, uh, hang on, let me just find this recipe on here somewhere. This is all, this is all things you can use ricotta in. Of course, it's not coming up, is it? Um, what's it called? Ricotta dumplings with Natalie sauce. Let's go. I found it, Mandy. Oh, have you? I, I just, it's in, it's in Australia and it's ricotta dumplings with Napoli sauce. I assume that's the one you're making. Yeah, it is. If we scroll down to the bottom, it tells us, oh, it's in the book that Karen had before, Everyday Cooking for Firm Weeks Families. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's an Australian recipe. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll we'll stop sharing. We'll come back to this in a minute. Okay. Thanks, Teresa. Uh, all right. I'm just going to get. We've got a couple of minutes on. Oh, a few seconds on this, and we'll get this going, and then then we'll move on to the um, the parmesan because that's super quick, and then the ricotta. Um, put you back onto the other screen. Um, just a quick question, Mandy. The recipes that are in the cookbooks, if when you put them into Cookie Do, yeah, they don't come up unless you go into the actual book, do they? Yes, they do. I'll tell you what. What we're going to do, we have a little bit of time whilst the record is making. We'll do a little thing on Cookie Do. All right. Perfect. And I'll show you. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we've got our onions and garlic in there. They've been sautéed. We've got a can of tomatoes going in. Some passata. Now, of course, you can make your own passata, but I haven't. Your stock paste. So I don't know about you, but um, but this is this is quite a this is actually quite a normal coloured stock paste. But I just use whatever vegetables um, are looking sad in the fridge, um, or stalks, or whatever you know, little scraps and things. 
freeze them. I'm going to chop them up, freeze them, and then bring them out to make vegetable stock. So sometimes my stock could be purple if it's got beetroot in it. Um, right, I'm just going to just going to rinse, put some water into the tin here, and just rinse that out. My hundred grams. Not quite enough. There we go. So we don't need to add salt because we've got the salt paste in there, which is sufficiently salty. Oh, measuring cup and mix it well. Okay, five minutes of that. All right, so we just let, whilst that's doing that, we're going to move to the other screen and we're going to do plant based parmesan. I'm just going to take us five seconds. Okay. So I've made it very easy for myself, and I've actually just put prepped everything in together because it all ends up in the bowl together. So we're putting in 50 grams. We don't have walnuts in this house because my husband doesn't like them, so we have pecans. So I've got pecans in there. I've got sunflower seeds. I've got my hemp seeds. I've got nutritional yeast. So that's what you use. If anyone, someone's vegan and you want the cheesy flavour, you can use nutritional yeast. Got some garlic flakes in there to make the powder. Salt. So just literally all those things are just going in. And then it's going to be speed eight for five seconds. There you go, that easy. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that back into the container I took everything out of. Messily. Okay. Yeah, so it makes quite a lot. And it, I mean, it looks, it's a different colour from Parmesan, but it looks like Parmesan. So that's that. And um, you probably, you probably all know about chopping up Parmesan, but we're just going to chop this bit of Parmesan up as well. So I know it's going to be about 10 seconds, but remember to use your ears. There we go, seven seconds. No, it smells like nuts. <laughs> um, all right, so, so the, the great thing about doing your own cheese is it has no additives and preservatives in it. All right, so you know, if you buy ready grated parmesan or any sort of cheese in the supermarket, it has anti caking agent in it. And that's one of the things I love about the Thermomix is that you, um, you know, you, you, you just put not. You know what you're putting into your body and there's so many hidden things and so many things that aren't on labels or they don't have to put them on labels because it's such a small amount. Apparently someone said if it's less than 
25% of the total of the product, it doesn't need to be put in there on the label. I got a very disappointed son this morning because he doesn't like cheese. <laughs> it's a very cheese, it's gonna be a very cheesy lunch in this house. Okay, so we've got our cheese is done, we've got the dumplings ready. This is about to finish, so we'll just um, go back onto that one. Okay, place the Verona with the dumplings in place. So that needs to take all that off, just the end seals. Put that on there. So there we go. Got the dumplings sitting on top. And they're just going to cook for 10 minutes. So that's all done. Right, back to this one. So there are a couple of ricotta recipes, um, slightly different quantities. So I'm going to put my That'll have to do. <laughs> okay, you're done. So that's going to cook for 15 minutes. We've got this one going for another eight, nine minutes. So. <laughs> He's lucky he gets home late lunch. He is lucky. He's very grateful. He's very grateful he came home from America and is living at home whilst this is on because he's, he's been very well fed. All right. So let's go through. Um, let me just read the, the notes I'm making today. So um, well, Teresa can probably help us with this as well. But I did look up what a Napoli sauce is. And it is a tomato-based sauce used with pastas. Um, traditionally called la salsa or sauce, including basil, bay leaf, thyme, oregano, pepper, corns, cloves, and olives. Um, it's a basic sauce which is vegetarian, and um, you can add mint or sausage. This is just what it said about um, when I googled an Napoli sauce, and apparently it's not necessarily particularly traditional to um, to Naples, but that's we all know as a Napoli sauce. With the um, plant-based parmesan. Um, yeah, so as I said, you know, I'm just showing it to you because it's quick and easy to make and just if you do have anybody you need to um, cater for, it's an easy thing to do. Hemp seeds are found in the supermarket. I've got some up here, actually. Where are they? Oh, yeah. Those are hemp seeds. They're not cheap, though. Uh, and um, it's actually cannabis, you know. <laughs> um, get high on your parmesan, on your, your, your fake parmesan. Um, okay, but it is apparently high in omega-3 and omega-6 and contains all the amino acids or proteins that the body needs. Um, hemp can reduce sugar cravings, Julie. Julie, Ju no, Julie Rosky, I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> you can't have sugar. Okay. Um, it can help with joint pain and gut health as well. Nutritional yeast also contains a lot of um, essential proteins that the body needs. It's a great source of vitamin B. 
I'll just get my thing about that too. So I mean, none of you may ever ever use it, but um, oh, that's probably it's delicious, fun, isn't it? <laughs> I think it works. I don't know why it's back to front on there. Anyway, there you are. Can you see that? It's just a Bragg's. You know, like the Bragg's um, uh, apple cider vinegar. It's a Bragg's nutritional yeast. Okay. Um, so ricotta apparently means recooked. And again, Teresa could tell us about this because she speaks Italian. Um, and it had its origins in the Bronze Age. Who would have thought? So when you make cheese, you get curds and whey. Um, and traditionally, ricotta is made from the tiny bits of curd left in the whey. The cheesemakers make whatever cheese they want to do out of the curds, and, um, and then they repurpose some of the whey to create ricotta. Um, so it's a good way to use up the whey. Um, nowadays, though, outside of Italy, anyway, ricotta is normally made with whole milk instead of the whey. Um, yeah, so basically, you, you heat the milk, which is what we're doing there, um, you add a bit of vinegar and that coagulates the milk and that creates the curds and whey sort of effect. Uh, yeah, and as it's, a, as it's a fresh cheese, it has, um, you know, it, it has more moisture and it's more perishable than a hard cheese, which is obvious, we all know that. Okay. Oh, where do I buy the, um, the yeast? Um, Supermarket. Food shop. The nutritional yeast, and Sue says it's delicious. You add it to soup. That's great. Right. Brilliant. Um, so, what can you use the ricotta for? And we'll have a little, little look on cookie too. I have made you a playlist. We have savoury things you can use the ricotta for, and sweet things you can use the ricotta for. So, I'll send that out to all of you. They're all those recipes are on cookie do. Um, and I'll also put it up on the Facebook page so people can find it there. But yeah, you can use it for on uh, soups on. Uh, Pasta and pizza, you can put it on toast. You can have a, a baked ricotta, yeah, absolutely, Teresa. There's a recipe for that. Make it into a dip. It says also you can eat it in season with fruit. You can bake it, you can use it as a pizza base. There is a pizza base on that, um, where is it? Maybe it put, yeah, cauliflower and ricotta pizza bases. Um, cheesecakes, yeah. Um, and you can store ricotta for up to a week in the fridge. Okay, so we'll just go on to cookie do, and um, so I'm gonna share my screen again. Bake ricotta dishes, unmixed ricotta with basil paste. Oh yeah, that does sound good. So on Thursday night, um, we're doing a team cooking experience, and I'm actually making pesto and harissa and nut milk. You've seen the nut milk. We, we did that almond milk, but um, you're very welcome to join. We're doing, um, so on, it's on the Facebook page. If you're not on the Facebook page, um, just email me and I can send you a link you need to register. Uh, there's also going to be mayonnaise, butter, and curry powder, I think it is. Curry powder is fantastic because if you don't have it, uh, if you're anything like me, I don't know if you can see this cupboard, it's full of nuts and things, and those are all my spices and things at the top. And I have all the spices I need to make curry powder if I don't have any. So um, it's fantastic to be able to do that in the film mix. All right, let's share the screen quickly. Uh, okay, so let's get out of that. That. Uh, so. Remember, with any of these uh, playlists that I make, do add in the United Kingdom and the United States. So just, I'll, I'll actually get out of all of that and I'll go back to explore and I'll just remind you how you do that. So we go into filters. So I know what it was. We've talked, Karen's asked, someone else asking about um, books and, um, uh, so books and collections and recipes. So here, we can change the collections. So um, the Around Asia book is the new um, the new book that came out two weeks ago, I suppose. Uh, and it's only your only way you can tell if it's a book 
or a collection is if you know or if you click into it. So if we click, in, click into postcards from Greece, for example, 10 recipes. Um, there's some really nice things in there too, by the way. I made the tureki um, before Easter for somebody. Uh, so Round Age is a book. These are small collections. Simply Delicious is a book. That's a book. Everything else so far is a collection and so on. So you just literally, it, just through knowing, and, and as the books come out, so Flavors of India is a book, Plant to Plate is a vegan book. That's where that Parmesan came from. Skinny Mixes is not a book, but that's, that's one of the small collections um, and so on. I mean, there's so many different things. That's the book that this recipe's in. Um, Sweet Nourish, she's got some great things in there. But let's let's help Julie out and let's go recipes. Sorry, Julie Rodsky with a with the sugar thing. Um, and I'm going to filters and then go right to the bottom, add in United States and United Kingdom. Now, if you like Teresa and probably Jamie, you can add in Italy and then you get you get Italian things as well. But that's totally useless for me. So. I will go just add those two countries in. Um, so now everything I've got here is um, for United States, Australia and the UK. So everything in English. Um, so what we're doing, we're going to tag sugar free. Oh. No added sugar. Oh, and hang on, we'll just stop that a second. Um, so we also be very sensible to go in here and go baking sweets and desserts and sweets. So it's showing 13. So you can't have much, Julie Rodsky. You've got, you haven't got much choice. But that's all right. You can perfect them. And I reckon there's more than this in there because I think there's, um, if I actually go to go back to collections, uh, no, that's not helping us. Um, there are a couple. I will find them for you and I will let you know what they are. But there are a couple. There's one in the UK for sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's something in, in Australia that's also um, sugar-free. All right, let's get out of that and come back to here. So, here we are. So, remembering when you, whenever you take your aroma off, um, put, put the lid upside down like this and put this in here so that then you can, um, they can, it, it, any water drains into there. Cool, all right. So, I've got to plate one up for you. We're all holding together, so that's a good thing. But they're a bit, um, that's too big, what I've got there. And um, they're, they're quite gooey. I've, um, the two that I steamed yesterday, I ate. Actually, the ones yesterday might be holding Oh, no, they're all, oh, they're good. i just put a few in there. All right, let's put those, let's put those aside. I'll plate them there. It was great for that. Hang on, my stuff is and sauce. Sauce actually looks incredible. So, plating is not my forte. All right, so that's um that and Parmesan cheese. And the picture has basil leaves on it, but um, you get the idea anyway. So it's, uh, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we've got three minutes on the on the ricotta. I'm just going to put the rest of this into a thermo server so it stays warm. So 
falling out is ball, so that's got to be a good sign. I haven't got any less messy Julie Rail, by the way. Okay, just addressing that, um, smells delicious, thanks Sue. <laughs> um, so, in regards to translating um, international recipes, if you use Google Chrome to, rather than the app, um, the Cookie Do app, Yeah, so if you use um, Google Chrome rather than the Cookie Do app, it will automatically change um, translate recipes for you. However, when it comes to cooking from the screen of your thermomix, you can absolutely um, uh, you know, add them to your week or add them into collections. What you do need to do is hold your phone in front of the screen with Google Translate on it. So it's possible, it's just whether you can be bothered. Um, and I... Look, at, look at, there are some amazing looking things. Um, in Germany, um, someone just come up, just posted something about this incredible cake that's um, uh, like, it's a bee cake or something. It's really amazing. Like, like it looks like it's got a honeycomb around the outside and everything. Oh. It's really amazing. Um, so, you know, and, and they, the Germans, have, because, you know, it's a German machine, um, the Germans actually have lots of, they have Thermomix magazines. So if you actually go onto the German cookie do, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of recipes. All right, we've got, we're nearly there with this ricotta. Let's go back to the other screen. So there we go. So it's heated the, the milk to 80 degrees, and then we just got to put in 80 grams of vinegar. And I've just got macho cheapo vinegar. That'll do. Seven minutes like that. So, um, I've got some, something very exciting to tell you, uh, and that is that from the 1st of June, um, I'm stepping up to a team leader role, which oh, I'm super well. excited about. Um, I have done it before and um, stood down for a while, but our current team leader is um, is moving on. Well, she's not. She's, she's, she's been trained to be a nurse for the last two years and she's got a job. So, um, so she's going to be doing that. She's thank you, um, and um, uh, yeah. And so I'm I'm taking on the role. So I'm very excited about that. So what that means is you guys need to look out for team members for me. I know probably none of you want to join, but you're welcome if you do. Um, <laughs> become a consultant. Um, but um, if you think of anybody who is interested in cooking, who doesn't have a firm mix with like one, just talk to them about the business opportunity because it's it's actually really flexible. And you even if they didn't want to stay on, you know, there's no predetermined time. Okay, so they could stay on, they could earn a firm mix and um, they can leave. They don't have to stay on forever. It's just, you know, there's a, there's a few nuts like me who stay on for years because we love it so much. Um, but anyway, just putting it out there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so I'm excited about that. So it's from the 1st of June. But still going to go on with all these things. 
um, that that's not going to change. I mean, you know, as, as as we move forwards and things open up and some of your life gets back to normal, we might not do them every week. It might be once a fortnight or something like that. But um, but I'm as long as you girls are happy to come on, um, I'm happy to do it. So um, yeah, and as I said, uh, next week we will do something to do with cakes. <laughs> well, thanks, Julia, for that. Help. Good. Yeah, I've actually had, um, there's a, a chap who was on here, I think it was that he and his wife were on last week, and his wife sent me an email and she said um, that uh, David is, he, he bought the firm mix, she didn't buy it, he bought it, um, he's retired, and he thought that you, um, that, uh, that it would be good for him to learn to cook, he had no idea, and they had some people around on um, Sunday night and he did three courses all in the firm mix. So, um, so that, that's really cool. Um, how are we going? Four minutes. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me unmute Julie Rao. Julie Rao, unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, so how are you going with your cookie? I'm loving it. So I've made naan and it's just so good, naan. And we did um, the Thai red fish curry. Yeah, that's right. On Sunday night, which was really good. Um, I've done a the satay chicken recipe. Um, what else have we done? Uh, I'm just I just love it. I just love I've I've saved all the curry paste recipes, and so this week I'm going to actually go out and get all the ingredients I need and make up all my curry paste and all that sort of thing. Great. Yeah, so I'm so really just enthusiastic. Just tell everybody how long it took to get a cookie. <laughs> Too long. Too long. I know. Yeah, yeah but I'm just I'm just glad you've got it and you're loving it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I do. Has yours arrived yet? No. No. It'll be on its way. Don't you worry. I hope so. I can't wait. Yeah, I think everything's just taking a bit longer at the moment. <coughs> yeah. Um, anybody else made something that they um, that they really loved and would like to share? Mm. Well. No, I told you about the slice, which was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I made um, the um, yogurt cake, which is just delicious. Yeah. From the base, from the basic everyday cookbook, ba basic recipe cookbook. It is so delicious and light, and no butter. Fantastic! That sounds really good. It's really nice to hear yogurt rather than having to say yogurt. Yes, it is. Sorry, it just comes out. I know, I know, I know. Well, I say it too. I have to really think about it. Just think of what. <laughs> um, cool, well, that's great. And um, Karen, um, so this afternoon of my, um, I do this cook-along thing and we're doing the creamy coconut chicken curry with cauliflower rice. And there's always like this, there's always, you need to fill in a bit of time. So I'm going to make the healthy banana bread. Oh, good. Yeah, I love the banana bread, but I never make it the same. I've always, I just use, if I've got other fruit or sultanas or nuts, um, sunflower seeds, anything like that. The only thing with, um, I think it's, I'm not sure whether it's the pepitas or the sunflower seeds, you just have to be aware that after a couple of days they get a bit greeny. Oh, so nice. Like the cake is mouldy, just... So that if anyone else is eating it, they think, oh, you're serving me mouldy cake. <laughs> Just so yeah. Very good tip. <laughs> yeah. So you sort of think, oh. But no, it's great. I'm actually cooking a risotto now while you're cooking. <laughs> good on you. Love it. Love it. Like us women, <laughs> good multitaskers. Yeah, that's right. I thought I'm listening and I'm, I'm making my own adjustments to a pumpkin risotto. Yeah, fantastic. That's brilliant. Oh, um, cook in pumpkin today because as I said I've got this whole pumpkin so I'll do some soup I'll do that tart and I'll do um, the risotto and I don't know <laughs> okay Catherine I can see you've written in the um in the chat box so uh, orange and sultana muffins they sound good were they on cookie do no do you convert them no made them up no, I, I found, I just did a Google search um, on, uh, you know, on my computer and um, I just wanted to make some orange muffins and there wasn't, didn't seem to be anything 
on Cookie Do, and I, I so I found this just online, and um, I think it was one of those um, sort of allied to Thermomix, but not Thermomix. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. Not sure. I can't remember the name, but anyway, they they seem to have a lot of things on, yeah. and they were absolutely lovely. They really reminded me of a very old fashioned cake my grandmother used to make, and just just lovely, very light, delicious. And they used a whole orange and some orange juice, and probably too much butter, and uh, but really lovely, very quick. Um, so you know. Um, the, on Cookie Do, there's a whole, there's a couple of whole orange cakes. There's one where you can just blitz the hot, the oranges raw, and there's one where you cook them, and then I think that's a orange and almond cake. That one where you where you where you cook them and then put them. Yeah, I've I've actually made both of those. I, I do love orange cakes, so but I just wanted to make the little the little ones. Yeah, trying to convince myself I'm actually only having a little bit. Well, like, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I do that. So, and one of the other cook and connect, uh, one of the cook along things in the evening, we made the health by chocolate, which is on Cookie Do. It's a tort, um, but I just made it into mini muffins. Mm -hmm. If you have a mini muffin, you think you're not being too naughty. And they're actually actually pretty good. I'll find them in a minute. But we just this is um it's got to sit for two minutes. So I'll tell you what. I'll find them. Find it whilst um whilst that's sitting for two minutes, and then we'll drain it, and you can have a look. Lovely. Okay. So we want to go into recipes for this. Logo. Oh, hang on. Let's see what other filters I had on there. Oh, that's all right. Help. Huh. Maybe it's too healthy to come up under sweets and things like that. I'll just uh, get rid of those. Oh, I hate it when that when that happens. And, it, and you, oh, it's because we've got no any sugar. That's truly um, health by chocolate. Oh. I'm not sure what, how nachos and chili, I know where it is. Let me find the, I know which, um, get rid of all, of, get rid of, I know it's in, it's in Australia. So we don't need that. We'll go to collections and it's a skinny mixes. Uh -oh. It's a skinny mixes collection. I don't think it's that one, but we'll just check. Not that one. But that one had a pumpkin and ricotta cannelloni in it. Yell out if you see skinny, the other skinny mixes. Here we are, classics. Yeah, so that, that's where that raw lamington slice is. In the yeah. um, that one looks interesting, walnut and date loaf. Um, this one, health by chocolate tour. Uh, uh, you think it would know me by now, wouldn't you? Logging. Um, so this has got coconut oil, almonds, dark chocolate, coconut sugar, vanilla bean paste salt and eggs and um i didn't do the ganache but basically um it's delicious and it worked out really really well as mini muffins so i know i should be advertising thermomix shop things um but i don't use the thermomix mini muffin pans i'll show you what i use. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe these in a second, but I, but I, I just use silicon ones because they're so easy just to pop out. So um, I love those. What other cakes do people like? Anything with citrus. Anything with citrus. Okay, cool. All right. One of my favourites is I uh, probably not sure if I've shown you this one before. Um, uh, I'll just go. Um, Tony with Danny Valent. She's got, I don't know if you look through this book, but this is got some amazing things. She's themed things. So there's, there's a breakfast sort of thing. And then um, she's got, I haven't made those, but they, but they look, they look good too. 
Um, contrary to popular belief, I don't just do lots of baking, but every now and then it's, well, and, and actually having our son home, he just likes to have something, and Andrew likes to have something too, so. Uh, where's this beautiful cake? Oh, those are incredible, but they, I don't know, with all those things that are meant to have runny middles, they either just sort of go bleh on your plate, <laughs> or the, the middle's not runny anymore. That is amazing, but it is a fair bit of work in that, but the salmon is cooked in oil. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds a bit odd, but it's, it's really incredible. Um, we must be coming up to, oh yes, we're coming up to this one. Okay, and this is, um, I don't make the Turkish delight, I did the first time. Um, so when she was launching this book, we all, um, you know, she, they were suggesting have dinner parties and do menus from this book. And, uh, and we, we did this with the Turkish delight, but it's the most amazing cake, it's absolutely delicious. Anyway, let me stop sharing and I'll show you the rest of the ricotta. Oh, before I do that, like $5 from Target or Woolies or something like that. Those are the silicon molds, molds that I use um, because everything just pops out. It's really easy. You, you just spray Andy with some spray or butter or something. I don't do anything in them. Really? Yeah, and they just pop out. Yeah. I'm not in love with my muffin tray, so I'm getting them. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so let's just go back to this. So it has been sitting, so I will pull it out. Look. Yeah, you can see there's stuff on the top. I'm going to do some draining in a minute. So what we do is drain it into here. I've just got a nut milk bag. Just a little tip for your nut milk bag if you are using this. I think you can use a yeah, muslin cloth or something else as well, but I've just got the nut milk bag so I might as well use it. It's, um, put it so that whatever you're putting in goes into the side that doesn't have the seams on it. Right, because then it makes it a lot easier to clean. Mm. Um, so you put that yeah. over here. I'm gonna I'm not gonna put it over the whole thing because I worked out when I was doing this yesterday. It's good to be able to access the handle because it's gonna be too much liquid in here. But basically I'm gonna pour liquid in here. This is, this is basically the sort of stuff that's gone in um, with that liquid. I'll just um, scrape that into. Uh, and then I'm just going to, because because it's got to drain, you don't want it sitting in the way. So I'm just going to put my, um, get this out and put it back into the bowl that I had it in before. I'll show you. So that, oh, I don't know if you can see that, that is a massive amount of whey there. So apparently you can use that in, I mean, it's good for, because it's protein, it's good for smoothies. Um, and it actually says you can use it as a substitute for buttermilk. You'd want to, um, you'd want to just Google that and see what, I know it's slightly different, it's not equal, but, um, but that is, but you can use it. I have to say, I confess, I did throw some of it out yesterday because I ended up with so much because I made two lots of ricotta yesterday and, um, and then I've got all this today. So I figured I'm not going to need sort of three litres of whey. Um, so it does go against the grain to, to throw it out, but it's um, got to be practical as well. Not <laughs> It's got to either sit in my freezer for ages and I think, oh, I'm not going to use it, I'm going to throw it out. So let's do it now. So, um, wow. Yeah, but so it looks. Oops, let me just. Get, I can get it over here now. I've just got to get that out. Put this right over so you guys can see. Yeah. Okay. There. Oof. Okay. Nice. And, and then it just basically says you need to leave it to sit for at least an hour, um, and it can be for up to ten hours. Um, in, excuse me, can I just ask, when it sits, does it need to go into the fridge or not? Um, I, um, 
I didn't put it in the fridge to begin with, but but because I had to, I made some yesterday, yeah, obviously went in the fridge overnight, but it doesn't have to sit. I, I look, I don't think it's warm enough. It's a bit, I don't think it's warm enough. To, it's okay to sit out there for an hour. I mean, it's really two hours. You've got to, anything longer than that, you really need to be very mindful of. Um, the, um, I'll, I'll get to these um, questions in a second, but I'm just going to work from the bottom upwards. The bag, mine is just at the packet. That, oh, hang on. <laughs> Back to the other screen after a uh, Oh, hang on. So it's just the Trinut Milk Bag. This one I got from the meat shop, but you can get them at um, you know health food shops and places like that too as well. But I, I find it really useful. So I do make almond milk. Um, and um, I find it really, really helpful for that, obviously, because it's a nut milk bag. Uh, and, and for things like this, it's great. Um, what other questions have we got? What's a really good dessert to repair ahead and take to a friend's house? Well, Catherine, I would say that love cake, honestly, I have taken it. Um, I think our accountants last year turned around our tax in about three days, you know, the beginning of July. And I wanted to thank them, obviously we paid them, but you know, a little extra something. And they, um, and I took them that chocolate love cake and they said, oh my goodness, is Mandy a, a cake person, you know, cake chef or whatever, uh, which I'm definitely not. But it, it is really um, spectacular. That's a really good one. The other one, the lemon meringue one I made, I uh, don't think you, you probably wouldn't have seen it, but I'll see if I can find it on here Just a minute. Uh, 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 this is in the UK, so I've got to come back in here. That's in the UK. Uh, uh, that's because it's got that in there. And I'll get rid of Australia and I just want. Um, I don't have, I've probably told you this before, but I, I, I'm missing a lot of um, letters on my lemon, no, 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 when I'm sitting down in front of my um, desk, at my desk, I can usually get it pretty right, <laughs> but I can't, obviously, my lemon meringue cake with 10 minute frosting. Mm. So that is really delicious. But Julie, it's not for you. It's got too much sugar. Oh, Sorry. oh okay. <laughs> Special treat, 80 20 rule. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So that one is really good. Um, so I, I tend, I think, really, when I'm going to uh, pay other people's houses, um, I often find that, you know, some sort of cake style dessert is, a, is an easy one to take. So I, I, I would generally go for some sort of cake, but that, that, those, those are good. Um, Teresa, you had poppy seeds, the classic orange and almond cake. Yeah, cool, fantastic. Um, I made the lemon meringue pie the other day. Yeah. But inside, it was beautiful, but inside, I think I just I did the blind baking in the... Everything that I want to. Mixture in the middle may like it wasn't hot, but it was still lukewarm. I think it would have been cold when I put it in, and it wasn't quite smooth. It had, I, I don't think I left it in the thermomix long enough, or I didn't add the eggs early enough, and it wow. was a sort of scrambled, not majorly, but yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So what did I do wrong? <laughs> Any of those things you said, probably, probably have to try it again and just really, just really watch it. Because I, I made um, yeah. the lemon, the lemon butter. Was it in? Was that in the in the lemon meringue pie recipe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because the lemon butter was in the in that cake recipe as well, and it works perfectly. So, um, and I don't know whether it makes a difference with these things. Oh, that's beautiful. Can, can chip in. 
whether your eggs are cold or they're room temperature. I'm, I'm not an expert on that, so I don't know, but I'm wondering if maybe that can make a difference too. It tasted good. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing. Fantastic. Yeah. Can I go back to ricotta for one second? Yes. Do you have to use a nut bag or could you, nut milk bag, or can you just do it with a fine sieve? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you probably could do a fine sieve because if I'll, 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 put, I'll spotlight it again for you now. It's been sitting there obviously for a few minutes now. Um, yeah, it's very solid, isn't it? It, it is quite solid. Oh, it looks wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think what we, we talked about last week, there was um, that New Women's Weekly book. And I found in there, it's a really, in fact, I might, I might make these um, next week as well. Um, they've got some, some muffins that use ricotta. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, anyway, so I thought I might give those a try. But, yeah, on, on this playlist, which I will email out to those of you on Facebook as well, there are some the ricotta fruit tart. Actually, Catherine, that looks really nice. A ricotta cheesecake with fig jam. Um, Sicilian ricotta cheesecake with botrytis soaked figs. Uh, that's a very nice. But but the but those those cakes or you know tarts or whatever look really nice. There's also which just sounds really interesting a rhubarb and ricotta bread and butter pudding. Oh yum. All right. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, um, we'll finish up. And Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Have a nice day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.